Constantly, some of my friends will ask why their film doesn't look nearly as clean or dynamic as some of the shots they see online with the same camera or same film stock. While some bold iteration of keep practicing or make sure you're metering correctly is definitely true, it's not necessarily the most helpful, especially with the expense of the hobby. However, I think there are three tangible things that many of my more novice photographer friends don't really employ, which is why many, many of their film roles turn out lackluster, at least in my opinion. First is not taking enough photos in general. Again, I know it's a whole cliche of you need to practice more. But I think going weeks or even months between shooting can be quite detrimental to your growth as a photographer. By shooting a couple days a week, even if you're just bringing your camera on a walk or something, you're keeping your photographic creative juices flowing and not getting rusty, so to speak. Don't worry about what camera you're using or even how you're capturing the photos. Majority of the time, it's not a gear or budget issue, it's a you issue. Much like working out, there's many days that I really don't want to, but you need to make it a habit. Most of the time, as soon as you start doing something like working out or going to the rock gym or anything, uh, as soon as you're actually there doing the workout, or in this case, shooting the photos, the process of it becomes a lot easier than when you're sitting at home thinking about starting. I find once I start something, it's much easier to just finish the task as opposed to the thought of having to start it never seems appealing again much like working out, which I think parallels a lot of people's relationship with exercise. Next is spending more times with your photos once you've gotten them back. Not only the ones you just took, but revisit old roles from years ago. Why did you take the photos? Is there many things you could have adjusted to make better photos at that time with this composition? Can you visibly tell that you've gotten better over time? Maybe there's some hidden gems that now with time have revealed themselves to you. I know for me, I've looked back at some older OM10 photos from when I was first starting out, and many photos that I remember disliking are now catching my eye. Additionally, this is where you can start to potentially see a pattern in your work. Perhaps in subject matter, or the photos can start to tell you a bit about your thought process about your artistic process. Photography is a complicated medium, not just making a pretty picture, and there's a lot to be learned when we do some internalization and start to ask ourselves, what does photography mean to us and why do we do it? I think by understanding your style and how it pertains to photography or storytelling as a whole can help you widen what your idea of photography is or narrow your scope to really help identify your creative vision with image making or really lock in that creative style. Also, analyzing your photos right when you get them back from the lab or get home from a shoot and start to ask yourself why certain ones work better than others. The more you internalize this, the more these good shots will become like muscle memory for you, just kind of innately capturing them instead of having to think about it while you're out shooting. Third, and I think this is probably the most omitted by many photographers, even professional ones, is reading photo books or looking at zines. There's only so much to be gained by only finding inspiration in photography on social media and Instagram. Conversely, photo books are a backbone to what we understand as photography today, keying us in on historical photographers, showing us their unique time period, social political issues, manifested ideas, and much more. Photo books are a whole artistic medium compared to a single photograph. By reading photo books, we see a project curated in a certain way to tell a specific message. Many photo books are compilations of master crafted photos that have taken years to create. Compared to Instagram where each post and photo has its own identity and is focused on getting as many likes as possible. In the context of a photo book, some photos which may seem unappealing on social media are monumentally powerful. Instead of chasing likes, these photographers are instead passionate about their work and creating a cohesive body of work and I think that is so clear even with just how I feel when flipping through the pages of a photo book compared to scrolling on Instagram. From different time periods, types of people, cultures, and locations around the world, to different styles and techniques of photography, photo books are an infinitely deep well of knowledge to dive into. Also, I know that photo books are expensive and trying to buy them consistently can be a bit much, so I'd recommend checking out a used bookstore or honestly, even the library. I think adhering to these three ideas, we can get better photography much quicker. While I know it's not always easy to make time, as with any hobby, the more time, thought, carefulness we put into it, the better we become and film photography is no exception. The more we shoot and analyze not only our images, but the greatest photographers and projects of all time, 
the more we can start to blur the line between our images and theirs. For me, really cementing this in my brain or like tattooing it on the inside of my eyeballs would have been probably like the single greatest, biggest move I could have made for myself as a entry level photographer. And I feel confident that these three things would definitely help you too. If there's something else that you can think of that would be helpful that is similar to these, let me know down in the comments as I'm sure someone else would find it helpful if nothing else. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Until the next one, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay shooting. Peace out.